I occasionally have to get on a call with a lot of developers trying to see, trying to evaluate them, their skill sets, if they are suitable for code them or not. And in this whole interview thing, interview process, I have learned a few things which helps me figure out which developer is good, which developer is bad, which developer still needs to learn a few more things on the basis of the projects they have built. So a very common question people ask is what kind of projects you should build in your resume. And in this video, I want to give you my point of view, which helps me evaluate a person, whether that's good or bad. It's no, I'm not saying like this is an industry practice or anything, but this just makes so much sense that if you implement this, this would automatically help you with other companies as well. Let's go and take a look at what I'm talking about. If you're new here, make sure you leave a like, subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon. This is free of cost and helps the channel grow. All right, let's talk about projects projects in your resume in this video. So projects is pretty important part, I would say, because at a glance, if I'm just reading the title of the project or just seeing it by, you know, on a deployed URL or somewhere, it will give me an idea about what kind of technologies you have used. You could have also mentioned it, but how it looks, for example, for a front end role, how it operates, for an example, for a back end role and so on. So projects is super important because it validates what you're saying in your resume, in your application. If you no JavaScript, if you know AWS, your project better be deployed on AWS on some service and not on GitHub pages, for example, right? So the very first thing which I do as a startup founder, again, I'm saying this would not be applicable for maybe like MNCs or companies or big companies, but definitely for startup founders or, you know, small teams who are looking for hiring web developers or looking for hiring skill sets of people like you is your skill set should match to your projects which you have built, right? And ideally, if this could match to the company, then that's a great thing, right? So if you are a Next.js developer, I'm a Next.js company, that means we use Next.js tech stack, you wrote Next.js as a skill set and you also have projects around that tech, that's obviously a green flag in a lot of cases because I know that you would not face a lot of trouble when you join the company. So list down the projects and make sure your resume is actually in sync with what you're saying, right? If you're saying that you do web development, make sure you don't have projects which only showcase mobile apps or data science or something just for the sake of filling this part because at a small scale small scale company we don't get tons of applications every single day so we do have the time to go through individual application carefully as in see what you have applied with take a look at your data take a look at your work so if you try to you know do some keyword buzzwording kind of stuff then obviously we are able to catch that all right the second thing which i do as one of the rounds which i really like to do is out of all the projects which a particular person have mentioned i would say pick one project of their choice their you know most favorite project which which could be on a number of criteria. basically this is a decision which they would have to take and obviously if they pick tic-tac-toe for example that's probably not a good sign if you are applying for a mid-level developer you should actually try to pick this is an advice for the person on the other end you should try to pick a medium size good size project which you have built so i would ask them to pick their most favorite project project which they are proud of a project which they have worked the most on and i would sit down with them and would try to get a knowledge transfer from them so get a kt on how they built the project and this this is actually a little bit tricky also because at this point you have to be also technical right in order to truly understand what they are saying you have to the interviewer have to be technical and ideally in the same tech stack in which you are interviewing right because otherwise if this is a python project i i don't know anything about that but at least it should be a javascript project in my case so Getting a knowledge transfer, this KT means knowledge transfer, that means that, you know, they are trying to make me understand how they have built everything, whether that's on a component level, on the architecture level, on the code level, how code is working, what, what state management they are using, what frameworks they are using, what choices they have made. So when you ask all these questions to a particular person, if they are good enough, they should be knowing in and out of details. Why did they decided to go with TypeScript, for example? Why did they install that particular? particular package in package.json why did they chose no sql over sql any any particular reason why did they use firebase instead of superbase or you know that's one and the same thing but firebase instead of setting up a custom backend for example what are a couple of things which they can improve in this particular project so the best part about this thing is that you actually get to know what that particular person 
would be able to you know do and understand topics in depth when they are also working on your company's project right because the project which they have built would soon be you know replaced in a way with the project which is being built in your company right if they are hired then at that point you are pretty much interviewing a person and trying to understand what kind of knowledge they grasp after working with a project for a few months at least i hope this might take like one or two months to build so having a medium sized project over here is something which is important because this will give me as the interviewer more surface area and any other startup founder if you are you know sitting with someone and they just ask you about any any particular project you have it's a medium sized project you get to show off more that you know about all the other all the different components in this project smaller projects are absolutely fine it's not like a red flag or anything but i would say like you know you should keep at least a big or a medium sized project which you have spent some time on which you have learned out of a lot which you have you know implemented ideally on your own or if even if you have just downloaded just make sure you understand it properly as if you have built the whole thing because you have to at some point and of course my final takeaway is like at least try to keep this one project updated so that means both in terms of the tech which you are using maybe that's getting outdated or yourself as well i have taken a couple of interviews in which they are most proud of and then you know 5 minutes down the line all they would be saying to me is that i did this code 8 months ago 9 months ago and i don't remember what's happening here i don't remember why i made that choice so make sure you are staying in touch with your projects as well especially the one which you would use to brag about so yep i mean this is like the best way i have found till date to actually get into a developer's mind because they have already worked with a particular project and they understand the nuances around it so now the question is that how do you build a project like this what is this project which you would use as a brag project or a showcase project now in order to determine this project the first thing you have to do and i would say like the way you could approach this multiple ways but one of the ways is try to list down all the tech you want to use in this project first of all right and that could be like firebase that could be like you know something like real time technology which firebase allows you to do that could be like material ui for the front end that could be like nextjs for the as uh, a front end framework that could be graphql or typescript plus rest on the back end that could be mongodb atlas that could be lambdas in AWS and so on. So when you list down these technologies, the next thing you have to do is back them up with an idea. An idea which could potentially use all of these features. And you don't necessarily have to think about a very complete or a broad idea. It could be just a subset of a particular thing. So for example, code dams playground interface for example. So instead of building the whole code dam as a project, a good project might be just to build that playground part as a project right or you know live video conferencing is another project which might involve the use of web sockets a lot of clones are also you know popular right which is also something which a lot of people prefer but this is only good if you are able to build it yourself from scratch because you're going to get stuck in this point in this part if you just download a code base and you're not able to justify the choices you have made so clones might also be a good option but only when you are able to deploy it perfectly and you know understand in and out of the code which you have downloaded so back this up with an idea and uh, this is like your capstone project your major project and the rest of the things you build on the side these could be like small 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 projects along the way that's fine so doing this would definitely obviously be helpful for you in a code dam interview but in a non code dam in another company interview as well i am optimistic that the end person the end user the interviewer the person who is taking your interview if he or she is technical they would appreciate the understanding and the depth you would have in a single project which is medium sized or you know is using a lot of different technologies and you are able to convey to them that why you made those decisions or why you are using something which you are using so i hope this gives you a bit of understanding a bit of idea on what your medium sized project should be a lot of people get stuck on tic tac toe car racing you know bubble trouble i don't know all these simple usually simple things and these are fine these are absolutely fine but it will be magical if you have another big project in your resume 
which you can use to brag about. And again, like I said, this is one man's point of view. You necessarily don't have to follow this, but if you do, it might help you in your interview but it will definitely help you build up your confidence as a developer. So that is all for this one. Make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know in the comments what you think, what has been your interview experience, what people have asked you. Actually, that will be interesting if you can tell me what other companies or other startups have asked you as a person, which is like non-DSA, non-competitive. We all know about the data structure competitive part. Let's leave that in the real world web development or any other app development kind of job if you're taking up that what people or what companies usually ask you let me know in the comments below that is all for this one i'm gonna see you in the next video very soon if you're still watching this video make sure you comment down in the comment section i watched this video till the end also if you're not part of codedamps discord community you are missing out a lot on events which we organize on a weekly basis to code you already know the drill make sure you like the video subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and thank you so much for watching